In the early 70s, the very early 70s, Anthony Burgess delivered an important lecture at the University of Malta on the subject of pornography. The lecture was entitled Obscenity and the Arts. Burgess writes in You've Had Your Time. The Church of Malta, founded by St Paul before he got to Rome, considered itself to possess an authority the Vatican could not override. The colonising British had not been interested, as Napoleon had been, in liberalising the island. In this post-colonial epoch, there was not one British resident prepared to join my fight against censorship. Not even the author Nigel Dennis. The Maltese Jesuits, with the subtlety of their order, suggested I give a lecture on pornography, thus bringing the whole issue of the bannable into an open forum. I acceded, I prepared my paper with care, and eventually faced an audience of 300 in the main lecture theatre of the university. In that audience there was not one layman or laywoman. There were nuns, monks, priests, bishops, though neither of the two archbishops, one for Malta and the other for Gozo. I threw my lecture as I had thrown my books, into a large silence. He goes on to say, in, uh, you've had your time. Few understood, and if any none there did, Milton must seem in the manner of a heretic, to be attacking virgin vows. I argued, perhaps unwisely, that if the didactic had its place in print, so the pornographic might also, as a device for refoculating sleeping passion. But the important thing was not to confuse one category with the other, nor either with a third category, which might be termed that of pure art. To ban a book on obstetrics because it showed diagrams of the uterus and ovaries was to confound the didactic with the pornographic. To ban Othello because supposed sexual infidelity is its theme, was to misunderstand both pornography and art. Decisions as to the possible depravity of a book, film or picture were to be made by the individual, not by uninstructed bodies of state hirelings. Any questions? There were no questions, but a fat Franciscan made a throat-cutting gesture. To give YouTube viewers a flavour of Burgess's Obscenity in the Arts lecture, let me just read one or two of his opening remarks. He, he says, 
we are told a great deal by foreign periodicals that Malta is a delightful place. This, of course, we know for ourselves. But there is one flaw in the perfection of Malta, and that consists in the vast number of dirty books which prevail here in people's homes, in schools, in universities. There is one particular story in one particular book, of which many copies can be found here, that comes into my mind as an example of the kind of thing to which the Malta reading public is subjected. It's a story about a woman who hates a man and determines to take revenge upon him. She arranges for her two sons to rape the married daughter of this man and, before raping her, to murder her husband. This they do, using the corpse of the husband as a pillow on which to execute the double rape. When the rape has been completed, they cut the girl's tongue out and cut off her hand so she can neither utter nor write down the names of her assailants. But she takes a stick between her arms and writes their names on the sand. Her father sees the names, invites the two miscreants to his house, and there kills them. He bakes their flesh in a pie, making the flour for this pie by grinding up their bones. Then he invites the mother to a feast. She indulges in a most unmaternal cannibalism. He murders her, murders his own daughter, who has brought shame on herself and shame on the house, and he murders himself. That story, as I said, is to be found here in Malta. The fact that it was written by William Shakespeare, it is his Titus Andronicus, uh, does not really excuse him or exculpate the fact. But I, and many authors like myself, must wonder sometimes what kind of standard of obscenity prevails on this island. Burgess goes on to argue in his lecture uh, uh, as follows. We regard the lowlier, the purgative functions of the human body as necessary evils, things we mustn't talk about very much, and Anything connected with these, thrown at us deliberately for some artistic, moral or immoral purpose, calls into being the term obscene. Let me give you an example. If I put a lump of human or animal ordure on your doorstep, I have probably performed an obscene act. The reason I have performed this may not be particularly clear, but you will undoubtedly interpret it as an insult, an expression of hate or contempt or the like. If, having deposited this lump of faeces on your doorstep, I then ring the bell and ask for toilet paper, I am compounding 
obscenity with insolence.